teachings of Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher, Dean of Students at Diaspora Yeshiva on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Parshish Masay, the long and winding road. Why does the Torah spend so many psukim writing about the travels that the Jewish people made when they left uh, Mitzrayim on their way to the Holy Land, they made 42 pit stops. So why is it important? Uh, we know the Torah is God's GPS. It's not a uh, history book. Why should I care where they traveled and where they stopped and where they camped? Why is it necessary for posterity to record all the, I think it's called a travel log or a travel itinerary of all the stops that we made when we left Mitzrayim on the way to Eretz Yisrael, why is that important? Rashi asked that question in uh, Bamidbar 33, Pasig 1. It says, all of these travels, why is it written down? Who cares? So Rashi says something incredible. Rashi says it can be compared to a uh, king that had a beloved child who became very sick. And the uh, doctor said that there's no chance for recovery in this kingdom of yours. The only cure for your beloved son, King, is if you take a trip across the ocean and, and doctor somewhere in the other side of the ocean, there they can find a cure for your child. But if over here, there's no cure. So the doctor packed up his bags and he took his son along and a long and difficult journey the till the, the king and his beloved sick child. And they went to this foreign country and uh, Finally, this, the child, the son, became cured. On the way back, the king began to reminisce with his child. He says, now you're cured, my son, but remember on the journey, the difficulty we went through, all of the hardships, and you got sick here, you got sicker there, and you got sicker there, and we finally made it. So this is the marshal. What's the nimshal? Avi, who's the king? Kodesh Baruch Hu. Who's the sick, beloved child? We are. we are. We do sins, we get spiritually sick. So Kurish Baruch Hu took us on this long and difficult journey of 42 stops in order to what? To receive our uh, cure. And Kurish Baruch Hu fondly recalls all of the pit stops that we made together with him. It's a long and winding road. It's a traveling manifest. And there's a lot of failures recorded here. A lot of failures. What's the message? That God is there with us through thick and thin. Even in the failures in life, and especially in the failures of, time, of life. Because Baruch Hu reminisces that I'm there with you. Imo enochi betzara, it's a in Psalm 91. Imo enochi betzara. In all suffering, God is there. So this is recorded for posterity, says Rashi, that God wants us to know that all hardships in life, and life is full of hardships, it's part of the divine plan. It's part of the game plan. Because only through pain can we gain. No pain, no gain. But the Kodesh Baruch Hu is there with us. And all the hardships and failures in life, it's part of the plan in order for us to get to the promised land. And the Baal Shem Tov says that every person, every Jewish person, from the beginning of time to the end of time, his roadmap, his journey through life is contained in these 42 pit stops. Says the Baal Shem Tov, every person, every Jewish person who's ever born till the end of time has to go through these 42 stops in life in order to reach the promised land. What's the promised land? Life after death. Here it's Eretz Yisrael. But for the individual soul, the promised land is Olam Haba. So all of us are on the road map of the long and windy journey. Life is a roller coaster, ups and downs. There are many failures that are written down over here. David, why are the failures recorded? Because if you don't fail, you'll never succeed. All failures in life comes what? All success in life only comes what? Despite the failures? Because of the failures. And therefore, this is written down over here. Kurish Baruch Hu reminisces. He fondly recalls the journeys with the failures. 
And there were many. Cheta Maraglim, Cheta Egel, Yekorach Mutiny, the wild Moabite women. There's a catalog of failures here. In Midbar 33, Mara, they complained the people were bitter, the water was bitter, the people were bitter. And yet, it's all recorded. It's all part of the plan. Yes, the failures in life is part of the divine plan. So these 42 stops that took 40 years, God says, I want this travel log recorded forever because I am with you in all of your hard times. But David, I don't understand. We're not supposed to be 40 years in the Midbar. We wouldn't have sinned, it says in by Midbar 10, three days after we left Har Sinai, we should have been in Pisgat Zev. I mean in... Uh, Rechavi in three days. By midbar, by Norna, by midbar ten says that they left Har Sinai, Pasid Baloischa, a three day journey. So a three day journey became a 40 year journey. So what is God reminiscing about? That he didn't abandon us. That plan B is Oichet good. Plan B is also good. Plan A doesn't work out even for him. Because we have free will. God says, I love you so much, you know, plan B is also good. So even though it's supposed to be a three-day journey when we left our Sinai, it turned into 40 years, plan B, also good. What a message in life. Plan A seldom turn, turns out. The message in life is that what? Plan B is also good. Remember that song, I'm a traveling man, made a lot of stops. That's all of us, David. Ricky Nelson. Right? Oh, We're a traveling man. We made a lot of stops. The long and winding road. This is the road map through life, says the Vashem Tov. Every Jewish person that's ever going to be born, if he looks carefully, can find his long and winding road here. With all the ups and downs of life, it's part of the plan. Incredible. Plan B is also worthwhile. Now, there's a catalog of sins over here. Take a look. You have by Midbar 33, Pasuk 16. Anybody want to read that? By Midbar 33, verse 16. They traveled from Midbar Sinai and they camped in the graves of the lusters. Does that say that in English? By Midbar 33, 16. Yeah. How does it say that in English, Chava? What graves? They, they traveled from. Desires. They traveled from Midbar Sinai and they wound up where? Uh, so what's the message? Midbar Sinai represents Torah values. If you disengage from Midbar Sinai, if you disconnect yourself from Torah values, you wind up. You wind up in the, the graveyard of the lusters if you disengage from the Midbar Sinai experience. But once you're there, are you stuck there? Look at Pasuk 17, Chava. How do you get out of Kivros Atava? But how do you get out? Verse 17, it's all the road map. The road map of life is here. If you, if you want to leave Kivros Atava, you have to camp in Chatserot. Chatserot is from the word Chatser. Chatser means a yard. A yard. You have to remember that this world is only like a yard. You don't spend too much time in the yard, do you? A lot of bees, mosquitoes, uh, it gets cold, there's a lot of rain and heat. You don't spend too much time in the yard. This world is only a chotzer. We're not here that long. The bias comes in all my boss. So if you remember that this world is only a chotzer, you'll disengage from Kivra Satava and get back to Midbar Sinai. It's, it's all, it's a process, it's, 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 uh, it's forwards and backwards, it's forwards and backwards, a person can always do tshuva. It's a catalog of our sins, which is very strange that the Torah writes about it. You listen to the Balkorah, the Shabbos, Daniel, the Balkorah will be singing this. It's a marching tune. Vayisu vayachnu. Why is the Balkorah, this Shabbos, why is he singing about our sins? Bury your head in shame. Okay, it's a catalog of our sins, a travel log of our sins, but why does the Balkore, how do you say it in English, the reader, Avi, why does he sing it to a marching tune? Make any sense? 
You have to say it, whisper it. But what are you singing about it? Golda, what's the answer? We failed. But then we did tshuva. So now we can sing about our failure. If failure leads to success, then you don't have to be ashamed of the failure. So therefore, not only are the failures recorded here, but the Balkora actually sings about it. Through tshuva. Tshuva can turn a sin into a win. Isn't that worth a song? Isn't that worth a song, Avi? Everybody fails in life, but if you turn that failure into success, then it's something to sing about, even the failure. Because without failing, you can't succeed. It's a Pasuk and Mishle. Sheva Yipo Tzadik Vakam. Only when the Tzadik falls seven times. Why is he a Tzadik? Vakam. Because he gets up. And the Vashem Tov says, only when you fail seven times and you don't give up and you keep getting up, only then you call the tzaddik. So therefore, yes, the sins are recorded and we sing them. Because we did tshuva for all of that. And therefore, we turn the sin into a win and that's something to what? To sing about. Something to sing about. It's all part of the plan. Even though it wasn't plan A, plan B is also fine. Maybe B will say I like what you said. But it says in Pasha Valoischa, the three day journey, after Har Sinai, if you wouldn't have seen Rachmiel three days, you'd be what in the Rova? I mean, a German colony. So it turned into 40 years. Better late than never. That's the message. Better late than ever, right? You say you can't succeed if you don't fail first? That's what I said. I said you can't really succeed unless you fail first. Isn't that true in the, in the uh, material world as well? Yeah, you, you ask many millionaires, uh, how did they become a millionaire? They failed, and they failed. They wouldn't have failed, they never would have succeeded. They wouldn't have failed, they would have remained in the, in the, in the mail room as a clerk. But they got fired, Avi, and then they got, it happened, read stories of millionaires. They wouldn't have failed, they wouldn't have gotten fired, they would have remained in the mail room for 60 years as a clerk. But because they got fired, they had to use their own talents to become millionaires. If that's true, Malk, in the physical world, it's certainly true what? Without failure, there could be no success. And therefore, the Torah records the 42 failures that we failed here. The Midbar Sinai and all of the failures. Take a look over here what the Torah says. Uh -huh. Now, it's just amazing how the Parsha of the week always speaks to current events. It's just incredible. Do do you don't need a Bible code. Bamidbar 33, verse 53. Anybody want to read that? Chava, Bamidbar 33, verse 53. 53. Bamidbar 33. In English or Hebrew? In English. You shall possess the land, and you shall settle in it, for to you have I given the land to possess it. So the Holy Nachmanity says something amazing. We know the Torah is very economical, Golden, not even extra letter. It says you shall possess the land and live there. Uh, isn't that redundant? If you live there, don't you possess the land? And if you possess the land, don't you live there? You just read it, right? Possess the land and live there, right? Isn't it redundant? It says the great Nachmanides, that's not redundant. The Torah is giving you two mitzvahs over here. To live in the land in Israel and to be sovereign here. So to have a Jewish government, according to Nachmanides, who was very Haredi, the great Nachmanides, who died in 1267. He was Haredi? I think he was Haredi. The great Nachmanides. Says there's a mitzvah to have a Jewish government. Yedis HaNochem. Not only is there a mitzvah to live in the land of Israel, but there's a mitzvah to have a Jewish government. Says the Holy Ramban. In this pasuk, the Torah gives me two mitzvahs. Live in the land of Israel, and also make sure you have a Jewish government in the land of Israel. David, and we, Baruch Hashem, we have both. The Holy Ramban. Elections are coming up September 17th, right? says, Yehuda Kuk, Every time you vote for a Jewish prime minister and a Jewish government, you're doing the mitzvah of Soim Tosim Alech Melech. There's a mitzvah in the Torah, Elisheva, to appoint a Jewish king. Today we ain't got no Jewish king. Says that see you who the cooks that's all. The, the, the closest thing we have to a Jewish king is what? Jewish prime minister. So according to Rav Cook, 
Daniel, who are you going to vote for? Hmm? Anytime you vote for a Jewish pre- prime minister in a Jewish government in Israel, you're doing the mitzvah of appointing what? A king. But anyway, there's a mitzvah to vote. Anybody you vote for, for a Jewish prime minister, you're doing the mitzvah. But here the Torah is telling us to what? To uh, live in the land of Israel and also make sure there's a Jewish government here. And the Torah is not repeating itself over here. Now it's just amazing over here how the Pasha of the week speaks to current events. It's just amazing. If you take a look at Bamidbar 33, verse 55, what does the Torah tell us over here? Chava, Bamidbar 33, 55. 55. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land before you, those of them whom you leave shall be pins in your eyes and a surrounding barrier of thorns in your side, and they will harass you upon the land in which you dwell. That's one second. That's, that's 55. Rashi translates differently. Rashi said if you don't drive out the terrorists and you let them live here, they will be seeking B'anechem. An amazing Rashi. Now Rashi wrote this in about 1050. He's seeking B'anechem. Rashi says, metal spikes in your eyes. Metal spikes in your eyes and daggers in your side. And they will terrorize you on the land that you live in. Now how did Rashi know about metal spikes in the year 1050? Metal spikes and daggers. What's he talking about? The knife intifada? And remember the bombs were going off over here? All of the bombs that they packed had shrapnel, metal spikes in them. And many victims never had nails embedded in their eyes. You can Google it. Never in the year 2000, 2000, when the bombs were going off of here, many victims had nails embedded in their... How did Rashi know this in the year 1050? How did Rashi know? Rashi, it's amazing. He says, metal spikes that will pierce your eyes. So the Torah is predicting that if we let the terrorists remain, they will terrorize us and won't let us live. Now, the Ramban says something amazing. Fasten your seatbelts. I couldn't make this up. You look at the Hebrew. Um, um, Daggers in your side. Uh, you just read the verse. The Hebrew. Right? Daggers in your side. Says the Ramban. Sakin chad mi barzel. They will terrorize you. A sharp knife from iron. What does Rashi have to, what does the Ramban have to say that for? Sakin chad mi barzel. They will terrorize you with a sharp knife made out of made out of barzel. What you don't think the Ramban is talking about the knife intifada? Yeah. Are you getting this? This was written in the year 1265 by the Ramban. And he says that our peace partners will terrorize us with sakin chadmi barzel, sharp knives made from iron. Isn't that incredible? And Rashi says, Rashi said, Sikim be'enechem, Rashi says, nails and screws. And you remember the sparrow bombing, not just the sparrow bomb, but all the bombs that they blew themselves all were packed with screws and nails. And the victims never had these nails embedded in their eyes. And the Torah predicted this 3,300 years ago. It's unbelievable. Everything is in the Torah. We, we ignore the Torah at what? At our own peril. Now, we let, let's keep in mind, Bila, that the end of the parsha and the beginning of the parsha must have a connection. So, the beginning of the parsha speaks about what? The long and winding road, all the stops and all the ups and downs, the failures that we made in the midbar, all the setbacks until we got to the promised land. The end of the parsha, the end of the parsha, tells us that the daughters of Tzlavchad were only permitted to marry their cousins from Shevet Menashe because they had territory in the land. The, 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 one territory shouldn't pass out to another Shevet. So the Torah says that the daughters of Slavchad 
are only permitted to marry their tribesmen. What in the world has that got to do with the beginning of the Pasha of Nochem? That the Benoist Slavchad could only marry their cousins from Shevet Menasha, so their territory shouldn't pass out to another tribe. What in the world has that got to do with the beginning of the Pasha? The beginning of the Pasha and the end of the Pasha always must what? They must connect. Let's think. The beginning of the Pasha was all of the failures and the setbacks that we went through when we left the Cairo on the way to Pisgah Zeb. Right? But, but eventually we got to Pisgah Zeb. I mean to uh, King George Street. Eventually we got there. Despite the many failures and the setbacks. We got there. Mm-hmm. The end of the Pasha. The Benoi Slavchad. They married their cousins. Who cares? They married their cousins. Thank you. Whatever's in the Torah, Avi, is GPS. What does GPS mean? God's personal system. There's no... People make a mistake. They think the Torah is, is ancient history. Terrible mistake. <coughs> the Torah is GPS. It's God's personal system for the year 2019. So the roadmap of life, we all have failures in life. We all have setbacks. It's part of the plan. Don't be depressed. God is there with you. That's part of the plan. To get... To success, you have to fail many times, at least 42, at least 42 times, Elisheva. How do I know? Because they failed 42 times on the way to the promised land. The end of the Pasha. So they married their cousins. Why should I care? I'm glad you asked. The Talmud says that these five girls, the five daughters of Tevye, of Tzalafchad, remember Tevye? Five daughters, huh? They all married their cousins, and all of them, when they got married, were over 40 years old. So who cares? I'm glad you asked. They're over 40 years old when they're married. Never give up hope. Good, but more than that. In the Midbar, each tribe lived in their own ghetto. So the cousins that they married, they went to kindergarten with them and romper room, and they grew up in the same neighborhood, their cousins. Why did they have to wait till 40 years old to marry them? Because they had to decide, had, the decision had to they be They knew them from kindergarten. Because the decision had to be made about the nachala, and that couldn't So therefore they couldn't get married before they were 40? They knew these kids they from the no grade school. The answer is, they tried to get married before, but it didn't work. There are many failures. Only when they're over 40, even though they knew these cousins from uh, kindergarten. We will sell no wine before it's time. Who said that? They went through many dating, many disappointments. Only when God decided that it should happen, it happened. And even though they knew these guys before. Now this idea is, this idea was dramatized at Panovich Rosh Hashiva many years ago. It was Masada Kedushin, one of his Talmidim. And then they didn't have much light. They, they were, about 60 years ago, they were Masada Kedushin out in the field. You know, they had out in the field to make a chuppah under the stars. There wasn't much light there. So the, the, the chassan took out a ring, was about to put it on the uh, finger of the kala, but the chassan was very nervous, you know. Uh, they fasted that day, chassan kala fast. So he's kind of nervous, you know, never spoke to a girl before, he's nervous, right? So he's shaking, and before he gets a chance to what? To put the ring on the finger, he drops it. And remember, it's pretty dark there, and it took like 10 minutes, and it was lost in the grass. This, oh, uh, Yashlamazel, how do you say in English? Oh, uh, Yashlamazel, bad karma, bad luck. Oh. It took him about 10 minutes looking in the grass with, flat, with the lighters. Those had lighters. Didn't have no cell phones then, but lighters. Okay. They found it. And so they said, Shlamazel, the Rebbe said, Shlamazel, what are you talking about? In Shamayim, God decreed that Yaakov, the Chosen, would marry Rochel. At 8.15, it was only 8.05, so he had to drop the ring, because 8.05 was too early. He had the part of Rosh Hashiva, and he quoted this pasuk. They're supposed to get married at 8.15. He was going to put the ring on 8.05. Can't be done. He had to lose it for 10 minutes. It's all part of all the disappointments. David is part of the plan. Isn't that incredible? How to look at life. 
that all disappointments in life, it's part of the plan. So he had to go through the anguish. Ten minutes, he couldn't find a ring. Imagine the, the, the bouchon and the cherpa. And what was she thinking, the kala? What a shlamazel I married. So the Rebbe said, no. 8.15, it's only 8.05, Daniel. But anyway, let's get back to by Midbar 33, 38. Chava, what's unique about this puzzle, Chava? By Midbar 33, verse 38. Please read it loud in your nice voice. By Midbar 33, 38. By Midbar 33, 38. Then, then, Aaron the Kohen went up to Malkor at the word of Hashem and died there in the 40th year after the children of Israel went forth from the land of Egypt in the fifth month on the first of the month. When did Aaron die? Tonight. Tonight. Tonight, Tonight is Aaron or Cohen's your sight. He died with Chodesh Av. What's unique, this is the only Yot side in the Torah. There is Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe. Nobody else's Yot side is recorded in the Torah except Aaron Cohen. Madua Valama. What is so unique about Aaron Cohen that only he gets the merit of having his, how do you say Yot side in English? Anniversary death day? Recorded in the. Yeah, forever. That's tonight. Tonight is Chodesh Chamishi. Echad Chodesh. Only your Torah. Why? Why? Why, Avram? Why? Why he was the first? Because he was the first. He was the first. He was the first. What about Avram? Yitzchak, Yaakov. What did they chop liver? They How come their your site's not in the Torah? Moshe's your site is not in the Torah. Miriam's your is not in the Torah. Only Avram. Oh, Malka hit a home run. Of all the saints, he is the one that is Oev Sholom Rodev Sholom. He had this midah, he loved everybody and brought them close to the Torah. So the Torah is recording that when he died, it says the entire Jewish people wept for him. Not like by Moses. By Moses, it doesn't say oh, everybody wept for him. But when Aaron died, there was a tremendous void. People felt that what? Felt the loss. It made such an impression because he was like Shlomo Kalba. He loved everybody. He reached out to everybody. He loved people and he brought them close to Torah. Not to what? To uh, judging them, but through what? Love. Like Chabad does. I think it was the first Chabadnik, right? <laughs> so therefore, his yacht site is recorded in the Torah. Right? And the message is that we should want emulate Aaron Ako, not to be judgmental, right? To bring people closer through love. Not by judging them, but by what? By pointing out that every human being is a godly soul. Every not just a Jewish person. Every person has a Salam again. Adam and Chava were not Jewish, were they? And it says they had a godly soul. So Aaron Ako, and it doesn't say he loved all Jews, it all of it abriot. He loved all people. That's what the Mishnah says. He, he loved all people and he brought them close to, close to the Torah. So a Jewish person, that's to keep the 613. For a non-Jew, keep the seven, go to heaven. So he taught non-Jewish people the Torah, their seven Noahide laws that, that, relates, that re relates to them. And therefore his Yotzad is the only one that is what? That is recorded in the, in the Torah, in the Chumash. Pretty amazing, right? So, Aaron, so all three leaders of the Jewish people died in the 40th year. Aaron died. Miriam died in the month of Nisan. Aaron died in the month of Av. And Moshe Rabbeinu died when? The month of Adar. All in the 40th year. Three great leaders of the Jewish people. Who are the three great leaders of the Jewish people, Bila? Who are they? Hmm? Uncle no, the, 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 there was no people then. Avram Yitzhak Yaakov. Why didn't God give the Torah to Avram Yitzhak Yaakov? King David. Why did God wait till there was a people? So the three great leaders of the Jewish people that took the Jews out of Egypt were Moshe, Moshe Aaron, and Miriam. God tells the prophet Micha in chapter 5 that uh, God doesn't, wouldn't tell a lady to sit in the back of the bus. God wouldn't do that. 
He tells the prophet Micha in chapter 5. I'll read it to you, Chava. Micha chapter 5. God says to the I took you up from the land of Egypt, and I redeemed you from the house of slaves, and I sent in front of you to lead you Moshe, Aaron, or Miriam. She's an equal co-captain with what? With Moshe and Aaron. Miriam is. And the Talmud says the three gifts that we had in the, in the Midbar. The man we got in Huschus. Moshe. 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 The magic clouds of glory in Huschus. Aaron. Aaron. And the magic well that followed us yeah. in Miriam. When Moshe died, the man stopped. When Aaron died, the magic clouds of glory departed. And when Miriam died, the well dried up. So she's an equal co-captain, a leader just as important as Moses and Aaron. Who says so? The prophet Micha, chapter 5, what God is telling him. That's pretty amazing, right? That she's equal up there. What? Moses is the greatest prophet. Yes, you're right. That one minute. That was the whole mistake that Aaron and Miriam, when they spoke against Moshe, they thought they were equal. That was a big mistake. Remember that movie in a league of his own? Yeah. In a league of his own. They didn't realize that Moshe is in a league of his own. Yes, they're also prophets. But Moshe is special and unique. And it happens in families, Malka, it happens in families that sometimes a great sibling is not appreciated. Doesn't it happen in families? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Moshe was the kid brother who was older than him uh, Aaron, and who was older Miriam and Aaron were older he's a kid brother they didn't realize that he was unique and special he's our kid brother we're also pro God does speak to us just like him that was a terrible mistake not to appreciate that he was unique and special yes but they're equally, not equal in prophecy, Hanok, but the prophet Micha says that they're co-captains in leading the Jewish people. Of course, in prophecy, Moshe, one of the Ani Mamans is, the 13th principle of faith, that never will be a prophet like Moshe Rabbeinu. But it happens in families, you know, you know that especially a younger sibling is not appreciated by the older ones. They look down on him, right? Remember that commercial, Mikey, he'll eat anything, give it to Mikey, he'll eat anything, the younger kid brother, you know. Moshe Rabbeinu was the kid brother, right? Miriam, she babysat for him. Remember that? So, so the mistake is recorded, right? Aaron and Miriam spoke against him, and they both became leprous, yes. and they paid a price that even great people make mistakes, and there's no cover-ups. Aaron and Miriam sinned, and they got punished, but once you sin and you do tshuva, you get beyond it. You learn from your mistakes. You grow from your mistakes, as Aaron and Miriam did. You don't dwell on it. Therefore, the word sin in Hebrew is Avera. The word for sin in Hebrew, Machanoch, is Avera. Avo. Avo. What does Avar mean? It's past. Let it pass. Let go. You did Shuva? Avera. Avar. It's in the past. Don't keep dwelling on it. Onwards and upwards. Moving on up pretty interesting King David wrote his most beautiful Psalms after his sin with Bathsheba not before the great King David the most beautiful Psalms in, in, in Tilim were written by him after his sin with Bathsheba the Gemara said, said he didn't commit adultery of course it was a sin the prophet says it was a sin it wasn't adultery because legally she had a get but still it wasn't nice what he did Right? Even though technically she had a get. Chata with Znus. Misha and David Chata with Znus is making a mistake. But the Novi says he sinned. Gemara cannot contradict the Novi. The Novi says he sinned. But the Gemara means it wasn't a chet of Znus. But it was still a chil Hashem. Still a chil Hashem. Right? Uh, and he. Uh, all the wives of the soldiers got gets. They got gets before. They, they shouldn't be MIAs. What's it, David? MIAs or missing in action? But they were expecting when they came back. They were expecting. They, okay, they remarried them when they came back. No, huh? They, they wanted to give them a. They wanted a half year. They gave a get and they remarried them, but still, it wasn't nice what he did, and uh, 
So, but he did tshuva. Look at Psalm 51, the classic psalm of tshuva. King David became the master artist of tshuva. The master artist. And therefore God chose him to be the Messiah. When did God choose him to be Messiah? Before his sin? Uh, with Bathsheba or after? It's amazing. Hello? When did God choose Aaron to be the high priest? After the golden calf. Isn't that bizarre? Aaron built the golden calf disco and God says, gee, you know what? I'm going to make you a high priest. <laughs> he sinned, but he did tshuva. So he learned from his failure. And now he can be the Kohen Gadol. Only after he sinned, he built the golden calf. So what a, uh, what a message. Judaism is such an optimistic religion, Hanoch. Because everybody sins and everybody fails. And you can grow from it and become even better. It's a verse in Mishle. Sheva yipol tzaddik bekam. Only when the tzaddik falls seven times and he keeps getting up, only then is he called a tzaddik. It says Bashemto. Sheva yipol tzaddik bekam. Hashem Tov says only when a person falls seven times, fails and doesn't give up, and he keeps trying to better himself, only then, David, is he called what? A tzaddik. That's pretty encouraging, don't you think? By Judaism is such an optimistic religion. Other religions say what? My way, the highway, what? You fail, you're out, right? You're born a sinner, you die. Born a sinner, you die a sinner, right? Sins, it's a guilt trip. Uh, anyway. So this is Shabbos Chazak, David. We finished the book of uh, Bamidbar, and it's called Shabbos Chazak. What does Chazak mean? Chazak. Why? We finished the book. And now we're ready to tackle what? The new book. Which one? Sefer Devarim, the fifth book. Chumash five. So we finished the fourth book. Now we're ready to go on to the Devarim. That's Shabbos Chazon. Next Shabbos, not this Shabbos. The Shabbos before Tisha B'av is called Shabbos Chazon. What does Shabbos Chazon mean? Division. Division of Yeshayo in Sefer Devarim. But let's hope if Mashiach comes before Tisha B'av, then, then Sunday will be a, a feast day instead of what? A fast day. David, right? It's been 1951 years. Isn't it about time, Chava? 1951 years. We're getting close. We're getting close. But Tisha B'av will become a young tip. Zechariah chapter 8 says, when Mashiach comes, the feast of Tisha, the fast of Tisha B'av will become what? The feast of Tisha B'av. So let's, let's do it. Let's do it. For more of Rabbi Sprecher's teachings, visit rabbisprecher.com. <laughs>